Now that we're done softening up the line with the one guard, we can move on to- What's going on guys? Fede Lua here, bringing you guys a brand new video. We're gonna be doing a high taper on my boy, so stay tuned. We're gonna be starting off by saturating the hair and combing everything in place, making sure everything's nice and laid down. Now that we're done saturating the hair, we're going to go ahead and grab our shears and create our first guideline through the top of the capitis and then follow it through the sides. I always like to debulk the top and then fade the sides. It makes it a little bit easier. With cutting with your shears, you always want to use the cones to feed the hair into your fingers and then hold it tight and straight and then cut it with your cutting blade. Also, you always want to keep that same consistent guideline throughout the whole head. Now we're going to bring that same guideline to the sides and begin to deep oak. Also, don't be afraid to resaturate the hair, especially when they have a lot of hair or curly hair, the hair likes to dry up. Now that we're done debulking the top, we can move on to the back taper and create our first guideline using our gold FX. Now that we're done balding out with our gold FX, we can move on to our foreguard all the way open and debulk the back. I hope you guys are enjoying the video. Please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. It's greatly appreciated. Also, if you guys want to support the channel, go ahead and leave a super thanks down below or follow the Instagram. Moving on to our clipper of a comb method, we're going to go ahead and debulk at a certain angle and we're also going to use our horizontal cuts. It's always best to do clipper of a comb work when the hair is nice and saturated since it's easier to pick up with the comb. Now that we're done building our silhouette, we can move on to our no guard all the way open and create our second guideline. You want to make this guideline around an inch thick so you can spread the blend. Now that we're done setting in that guideline, we're going to slightly close the lever midway and all the way close and remove that initial guideline. Now that we're done erasing our initial guideline, we can move on to our one guard all the way open and create our third guideline. We're going to use this same guard and its lever to soften up this line and get ready for the half guard. Now that the line is soft enough with the one guard, we can move on to the half guard and erase the line completely. Make sure to use your corners and its lever to do so. Now that we're done with our lower guards, we can move on to our two guard all the way open and create our fourth guideline. When you reach the top of this guideline, you want to make sure you flick out. Now that we're done using the two guard all the way open, we can move on to the one and a half guard and erase the line completely. Make sure to use your corner and its lever.
Sometimes after using your one and a half guard, there's still a faint line, so switching over to your one guard all the way open and using his corners would definitely help. Here we're adding as much detail as possible without taking the taper too high. Moving on to our three guard all the way open, we're going to go ahead and begin to debulk and flick out as much as possible blending into our silhouette. After I'm done blending out my guidelines, I'm going back to the taper and I'm always detailing with my two guard all the way open, one and a half guard all the way open, and my one guard all the way open. Heading back to our clipper of a comb method, we're going to go ahead and finish off the taper and debulk a little bit. As you guys can see, the taper's coming together and is looking real blurry. Now we're heading to the sides and we're going to continue to debulk and give them that flare shape and that nice taper blowout shape. I'm consistently using my clipper over comb to cut at an angle and making sure that it all blends in neat, nice and neatly. Me debulking the sides here is going to make it easier for me to blend in so it's less overhang. I'm pretty much creating and preparing the silhouette before I start to cut into the taper. Now that we have a consistent base, we can move on to our gold FX and create our first guideline. We are making a high temple taper so we want to make sure we cut near the temple. Now that we're done creating our first guideline, we can move on to our no guard all the way open and create our second guideline. We're then going to slightly close the lever midway and all the way close and attack that initial guideline. Moving on to our clipper of a comb method, before we use our one guard all the way open, we're going to go ahead and debulk and shape it up a little bit. Now we're moving on to our one guard all the way open and we're creating our third guideline. This guideline is going to help us connect with our one and a half guard and our half guard. Now that we're done softening up the line with the one guard, we can move on to our half guard and erase the line completely. Make sure to use your corners and its lever. Also, don't be afraid to stretch the skin with your opposite hand. It is necessary to stretch the skin when fading, especially when you need to spread the blend. Now that we're done with the lower guards, we're moving on to our two guard all the way open and we're creating a fourth guideline. We are making sure I'm flicking out as much as possible and also this is going to prepare us for our one and a half guard. Before erasing the line completely with my one and a half guard, I'm going to use my clipper of a comb to begin to deep bulk and also make the fade as smooth as possible into the top. 
Clipper over comb is the most technical and critical technique with learning how to do these type of haircuts. Without clipper over comb, for the most part, you won't be able to create the shape you want to create. Moving on to the back line, we're going to go ahead and take our gold FX and start off at the bottom, working our way to the top arch. Just like when you're lining up the hairline, you want to make sure you go slow as possible, making sure that the hair feeds into the teeth and trimmer. Moving on to the sideburn, we're going to go ahead and start off with our no guard all the way open, creating our first guideline. We're then going to use our one guard all the way open and our half guard to begin to blend in the sideburn. I hope you guys are enjoying the video. Please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe is greatly appreciated. Also, if you guys want to support the channel, go ahead and leave a super thanks down below or follow the Instagram. Moving on to the bottom of the beard, we're going to go ahead and use our gold effects to make it as crispy as possible. I always ask my clients if they want to take down their mustache and if they do I always take it down to a one guard all the way open. I feel like that's a very uh, perfect length where it's enough darkness but it's short enough that it's not long enough that it bothers them. Now that we're done with the facial hair we're going to go ahead and pin up the hair and begin to line up his hairline. But before we line him up we're going to go ahead and deep bulk with the one and a half guard all the way open which is equivalent to a two guard closed. Now that we're done debulking the hairline going with the grain, we could go ahead and move on to our gold FX and start off in the middle working our way to the sides. Again, you want to make sure you go slow enough that the hair feeds into the teeth of the trimmer because if not, then the hair is going to shift and then you will line them up properly. Now we're going to go ahead and connect this side to the right side. You want to keep the corners and vertical bars as natural as possible. You want to make sure you don't go too deep in and also cut them too short. Now that we're done lining them up, we can move on to our Turkish Razor and Derber Premium Blades and make them as crispy as possible. Before you use your razor, you always want to make sure you apply some shave gel so that the razor could glide better. Also, you want to keep the razor at a 45 degree angle and stretch the skin as much as possible with your opposite hand. This lowers the likelihood of you cutting someone. 